Hello guys. Um, for those of you that have been watching me, I want to tell you a prayer's been answered. You know, I was we've been looking for another apartment because of all the noise and the craziness in this house. Um, for those of you that don't know, my wife has been contracted with different schools and uh, we've moved to several different cities here in Columbia and uh, we have rented places online because the travel is so difficult to get from one place to another here in this country or to some of these places and it ain't like you can just get on a plane and get to a lot of these towns so we rented this place online and what a crap hole this has been uh, and for you guys that really watch us, you know that uh, we're just in a stinking hot hellhole of a place with awful people uh, that are just loud and obnoxious and drunk 24 hours a day. Not knocking people that drink, but I am knocking people that drink and raise hell and won't give nobody around them any peace 24 hours a day. That kind of drinking I don't like. The kind of drinking where you can sit down and drink and have a good time, nowhere to take the party and not party and disturb everybody around you and just the whole host of the gambit of it. But uh, anyway, you probably hear Rocky in the background crying our German Shepherd uh, we're not really able to walk him as good as I want to around here I'm having to go out with a pistol when I go uh, and I don't like that I got in a fight outside a few weeks ago or a skirmish not really a fight uh, but uh, so just a whole host of problems here uh, I went out earlier today my wife texts my son, I don't own a telephone, and it's beautiful that I don't own a telephone because it's the less I get bothered. But even if I'm with my son or if I'm with my wife out, people text them, and it can bother me as well. But when I go out, uh, I can't be bothered, so I love that. Anyway, uh, must be the old guy in me. Uh, what I wanted to tell you guys was while I was out me and Joe were out earlier today My wife sent a text and said the real estate company of the first apartment that we looked at Which was the most beautiful and elegant place with a gated community with the guards in the front and the Olympic size swimming pool and the tennis courts and the great big huge gym and all these amenities uh, that I was so heartbroken over because for some reason they didn't approve me uh, they called today and said uh, Miss Allen we made a mistake uh, your husband was approved immediately and somehow it the papers got put in the non-approved stack and we were going through the non-approved stack uh, to see if we could help some people that were not approved get some other places here or there. And we come through yours and yours was approved. It was approved originally. And out of the, the two places over there in the beautiful gated community, there's still one left. So if you'd like to have it. And my wife said, we will be down there. When do you open? They said, well, we'll be opening at 8 o'clock Monday morning. And uh, my wife said, my husband will be there minimum by 7.30 waiting in the parking lot, which I will be. So thank you, Lord, for this. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Uh, had I been approved immediately and were there already, I would not realize how precious it was to me. Uh, being that all this happened and it took the more time and the more hell that we've went through, I will appreciate it more. So... Always a positive and a negative. Always somewhere you can look to get a positive and a negative. So thank God. Uh, God is so good to me it ain't even funny. I'm telling you people. 
And he started getting better to me when I quit asking him for a bunch of junk and got done on my hands and knees and started giving thanks for what I do have. That's when blessings started pouring more on me. So, anyway, that being said, and that wonderful miracle in me, my son, and Joe, my son and my wife's life, which is monumental for us, going from hell to heaven, uh, on earth. Um, I wanted to say something else because this video will be a little short. You know, you guys know I ramble off for 35 minutes. So I'm going to put both these things in one video. Big, big shout out to former prize fighter professional Ghetto Greg Towns. Well, why are you doing that, Jim? This man is the... One of us are the walking opposite race version of the other. That's why. We may not see everything down the line. I've watched, this, watched him for a while. This guy know, has forgot more about boxing than I would ever think to know. I respect him. And as far as U.S. YouTube channels, you guys know who's tops in my book. Real Talk Boxing with Mr. G. Uh, the Boxing Scholar. And Punching Bag Skunk with Mr. Ghetto Greg. They're my three big for U.S. channels. Uh, they all happen to be black gentlemen. Go figure, right? Uh, and that's where what, what Greg was talking about over at Punching Bag Skunk, which go over there because even if you don't agree with him, if you even remotely like or agree with some of the rants that I go through, you are going to love this man. Trust me. Uh, if you're in a disagreement with me 25 to maybe 30% of the time, uh, you'll agree with him 25 or 30% more of the time. So it's a win-win situation for you. If you like this channel, you'll like his channel. Um, he put a video up this morning about hating on Devin Haney. And I agree with that. Now, I believe if I, he said so much in that video, I can't, I can't I'm going to have to go back and look at it again because I can't digest it all and I've had a hectic day and things. Big, big day for me. Uh, so I believe that he, that, that he feels that Haney won the fight. I believe that, uh, Loma edged it out. Throw that out the door. Boxing is subjective. That's not the big issue here. But he was talking about hating on Devin Haney. He talks about, and that's ridiculous. Who? Why is anybody going to hate Haney? What? I mean, what reason does anybody have to be hating on this guy? I'll up the ante on that. Uh, Spence. I've never heard this guy get out of line or be ugly or disrespectful. Who's going to be hating on him? Uh, Bud Crawford. Now, see, I don't watch this particular weight class as much as I should, and it's probably the most exciting weight class. So I'm not sitting here watching every interview and all these things. But, uh, you know, I look at uh, Spence and... Uh, Crawford is fellow country boys. There ain't nothing going on here. You, know, you hear these boys talk, and especially Crawford, and I'm like, he sounds like he lives next door to me. That's a guy I'd be sitting down drinking a beer with. It's about that simple. So, yeah, and I want to talk about the hate, hate known in general. And then I want to get on a somebody who's been the biggest hypocrite I know. Who would that be, Jim? 
This is who it would be. This guy right here. I've been lighting in on Tank Tank Davis's ass for crap that's happened with him. The way he's like being tough guy or this or that. Look, I'm an old man. Give me a break. Give me some time. I got to thinking about about him, and uh, literally, he's the only guy that occasionally will buckle up and let those damn hands go at the risk of getting his own ass knocked out. And Mr. Towns was talking about that earlier today. And I've been saying this. You know, let them hands go. Fight people. And how comfortable these fighters are getting not fighting one another. They seem to be comfortable not fighting one another and like Let's ride this making money out, you know, because one of us are going to have to lose. So instead of that, we just ride the money train together and ride it on out as far as we can ride it. And I don't like that part of boxing. I'm not going to grow into that part of boxing. I'm not going to really respect that part of boxing. Uh, not going to cotton to it, as they say in the good old South. Um just not going to do it. Uh, but I've been too hard on Tank Davis because everything I say I like in a fighter, uh, he's one of the very few that at particular moments show it and do it. So I got to I gotta lay off this guy. I got to lay off of him. Another thing that Greg talks about is... Uh, White guilt and black guilt. Then y'all really need to go. Just go watch the last video he put out. Punching bag skunk. And he's a rounder like me. Uh, but there again, remember, he's forgotten more about boxing than I know. Uh, and trust me, I know, I know who knows. I'm knowledgeable enough to know who knows way more than I know. So he talks about how it's turned into a social media thing and uh, he trying to get into acceptance of the YouTube thing and stuff like that. Um, and I, I'm really paraphrasing that in one great big lump. So it may not come out right. So I hope all of you go watch his last video. It'll have hating that dead. Devin Haney in the title of it by the way, I just can't remember the title uh, but the channel is Punching Bag Skunk and uh, makes a lot of sense uh, talks, uh, you know he, he just tells, that, you know like I do, we just tell the truth he just happens to be a black man that tells it and I just happen to be a white man that tells it and I think a lot of these things just come with age, folks. They just come with age. Uh, I believe he and I grew up in a era that uh, you young people just have been taught you can't say certain things. You got to be scared. And in our in our era, you could freely talk where you can't today. So I get it and I understand you younger guys, but you may not understand he nor I. Uh, but he talks about the, uh, it's obvious that there's white guilt and people are scared to say what they want and this and that and the other. And he talks about black people having black guilt too. And maybe white people liking black fighters that they wouldn't normally like. And black people not pulling for black, black fighters that probably they should pull for. Uh, look, when you're in the, the minority in a country, you should be pulling for a young guy. And there's nothing racist or bad about that at all. Right? And really, even if you're in the majority, you should be pulling for your guy. Your guys should be the people that more so look like you. Now, does that mean every black guy should not pull for or like 
white or Latino fighters. Shit, no, that's not what I'm saying. So just, just think about what I'm saying. Or vice versa to all races, right? And that's not what I'm saying. But what I am saying is there's nothing wrong with pulling, if you're a black guy, and pulling for black fighters. It's natural. Uh, if you're a, a white guy, you're probably going to lean towards white fighters in the division you like best. There's nothing wrong with that. If you're a Latin American, you're probably going to pull for the Latinos in the white divisions you like. There's nothing wrong with that. We got to get off of this race thing. Boxing is boxing, folks. Really, I mean, it really is. And uh, this this shit today about worrying more about the what a fighter's going to be wearing. Really, being so entangled in how many tickets this fighter did over here. Number one, I don't know how really you rationalize all that out in the first place. Because if you're educated in higher mathematics and statistics, uh, there, there would be a way to work that out. But if you got a fighter over here uh, that is, is fighting fighter A, B, and C over here, maybe A, B, and C over here are pulling in more ticket sales fighting your guy. So you can't just say, well, the one guy, and the ticket sales, oh, get out of here with that. That's baloney and it's a bunch of bull crap. It's hogwash and uh, it's silly. That's what it is. It's silly. And you, and, and you are a jackass. If that's your thing with boxing, you need to go on to badminton or the sweeping, you know, where that little thing's going across the floor, uh, you know, or something like that. Tennis would be too hard. It's too physical for you if the fashion is the thing for you. And there's nothing wrong with you. If that's your thing, they should trigger. But uh, it doesn't necessarily, necessarily belong in combat sport to be the premier thing. And that's all anybody's saying. Uh, ain't nobody trying to really just put you down, but our older generations, we're having a tough time with you guys because uh, number one, we 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 fought, right? And you still see fights today. You go look at the amateurs today, uh, in a lot of areas in the world and a lot of states throughout the U.S. Uh, they're letting them hands go, boy. They're full on. And you start looking at the professionals. Everybody's holding back punches, playing 93D chess. And, uh, you know, and I understand this. <laughs> There's some forward thought in the game, uh, which is the only game you can't play. I understand that. Uh, but we need... We need uh, people to fight nowadays and uh, people get upset with the older generation about that and to you younger guys get off our backs uh, please do uh, go watch round one of Hagler Hearns and then come back and talk to me about your fighters today G go watch uh, Leonard Duran one and all those 15 rounds and the gunslinging that's going on there from round one to the end of the 15th round and then come back and talk to me of course we're going to be have problems with this generation of fighters of course we are boxing has had stages where it's kind of been a little weaker than other stages uh, but yet it hasn't uh, until now because uh, and I'll give you an example after Muhammad Ali we had Larry Holmes well that wasn't exciting that wasn't are you kidding me Larry Holmes would whoop the shit out of any heavyweight champion today 
Uh, I got news flash for you. Uh, he would beat Fury, he would beat Wilder, he would beat Joshua, he would beat uh, Ruiz, he would beat any of these guys. Uh, it would be an ass-whooping clinic with just throwing a jab. Nothing complicated about it. Ass-whooping with a left jab. Guaranteed. You. And that constant in the face, none of these fighters would be able to handle. They wouldn't be able to handle that for 12 rounds. If they went back and it was 15 rounds, there wouldn't a guy today last with anybody a yesteryear. Not a damn one of them. I mean, literally not a one of them. And it's funny because the guys that seem to be really, really great today are lefties. They're Southpaws, folks. Used to be back in the day, the sport was so damn vicious and combative that people used to didn't want to fight southpaws. Southpaws would almost in totality, almost in totality, switch to orthodox. And people aren't, aren't seeing these things. Because they haven't grown up with these things, see. So, big shout out. If you watch this channel, um, I'm going to give you several U.S. channels to watch. You want to watch a badass in motion today? Go to the real DannyChristie.com and watch some bare knuckles. Watch the hardest hitting bare knuckle guy probably in the world out of any weight division and he's the light heavyweight bare knuckle United Kingdom champ, champ. Uh, you want to watch some uh, really good wholesome boxing news with a great perspective go watch Real Talk Boxing and I hope you subscribe to all these channels I mentioned. You want to really, really look at a guy that can break a fight down, you should go to the DA Boxing Scholar. If you want a great, great history of this wonderful sport of boxing, scrapbook boxing, and if you want a great perspective from somebody that won't hold back, punching bag skunk. And if you want another guy that doesn't hold back and want to watch him and his bad to the bone son, subscribe to our channel. And get you a good new perspective other than the color of the blouse that the uh, champ is wearing or wore last week. You know, or the style of the glasses that they're wearing. If you want some more in-depth, thought-filled stuff, you should watch our channels. Um, and I'll leave it at that. I'll leave it at that. Uh, blessings, blessings, blessings to my Christian brothers and sisters. To those of you whom do not realize that the King of Kings is Jesus Christ, in my imperfectness, I invite you to try to get to know Him. And I hope that if He knocks on your door, that you answer it. That's my sincere prayer for you. And I hope that we all start praying more for, for the things that God knows that we need to have instead of what we want to have. You know, I say that a lot at the end of these videos. And although I was upset and fixing to go spend a fortune of money for a less better place to live and pay a year or so's lease up front, and I was going to do that. 
I uh, was fixing to do that Monday morning. That was the, the intent. Uh, things were held on. A disapproved stack. Uh, uh, my papers that were approved got put in a disapproved stack. Something. Something else. And uh, and getting that blessing today. I'm, I'm glad now I got it later and went through the more hell that I went through because I will appreciate this more grandiose place that much more than if I just walked in, got it, and moved into it that day. So this has been a long time in the waiting, a lot of suffering for me and my son and my wife and for our dog who we consider a son. Rocky, the genius extraordinaire, uh, German Shepherd. And it's going to be such a blessing. Oh my gosh, I could go on for an hour about this place. Uh, I'll be able to, it'll help me because I'll be able to walk, uh, walk Rocky in peace and uh, a beautiful uh, route up to a park, which is right there. And be able to let him loose and run in the park, and uh, that helps me relax. And uh, a wonderful place where, when we do home train, uh, Joe will be able to train at home at will with an Olympic sized swimming pool to be able to swim laps in, and for him to just get in and enjoy himself. And he's just 14. A lot of people are like, Wow, I didn't know that. And, Everywhere in the real face-to-face -face world, people are shocked when I say he's just 14. They're like, oh my God, I thought he was in his 20s. Because uh, he, he's a big boy. And uh, I'm just thankful to God, thankful to everyone in you that watch this channel. And hope that the good Lord just blesses you and... Uh, one thing I do pray for every single one of you is something I've been praying for for myself, which is peace and uh, is less chaos around me. And I've been in this for several months now. Total chaos neighborhood, chaos music, chaos everything. And oh, how pleasing it is going to be to be in this new beautiful place oh I'm so thankful to the good Lord uh, without fail I always get what I need and I want you to have the same so blessings everyone uh, I hope you if you're not subscribed to this channel and you just have to on here I hope you subscribe uh, if not I hope you subscribe to the other channels that I mentioned because these people are wonderful and much, much love to you. Thank you for watching this.